So this is Better Me TV, and we're checking in with Randy. Randy's the star of our new uh, video, Why Digitize, coming out this fall. How's this experience been going for you for uh, shooting Why Digitize so far? Oh man, it's been awesome. I've been thinking about how much, you know, how exciting it's been to be a part of a film production and, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I get to study fish for my job, but it would have been really cool if I could have just rewind and do film Come forever. Yeah, yeah, I would redo awesome, it. Awesome. Was it was it college that kind of got you into science, or did you have uh, like an inclination towards that earlier on? I mean, you know, I don't know. Like, I definitely like. I always loved going to aquariums. I always went to, you know, my uncle works at the Gulf Coast Research Laboratory in Southern Mississippi, and I'd always go stay with him over the summers. And that's where I kind of learned about the scientific process. And you know, my dad was a high school science teacher, and so all these things kind of came together to. You know, where I just started, and you know, I figured science is what I wanted to do. It's just I didn't know how I wanted to do that. I'm, I'm kind of a big Back to the Future fan, so I always like to, 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 to you know, this, this is a time machine, right? So this, the information on this fish from the '60s tells us something about what was going on in the world in the 60s. So this is a deep sea lizard fish. I mean, it lives way down in the deep ocean, but we know, you know, where this fish was living. We know something maybe about what it ate, something about um, how its, you know, skeleton is, is constructed. And when you put it all together and you think about an entire museum, you can kind of get a picture of what the world has been like as it's changed through time. And then going forward into the future, all the specimens that we're collecting and storing here in the museum are like little tiny pictures. You know, it's like nature's Instagram. A lot of the specimens we have here have always kind of been locked up behind closed doors and researchers were really the only people that knew they were here. So now there's a really big push to share all the really cool information with everybody and, and digitization is the way to do that. Um, one thing that I always recommend that people do though is if you do collect something like a fossil or an animal or something like that, is just bring it into the museum and sit down with a curator or a collection manager and talk about what you found and they'll tell you all about it. And if you want, which I highly recommend, you catalog, have it cataloged here in the museum and your name will go on it and your observation and your collection will be immortalized forever in a museum and people can use that specimen for their research or anything. It's nice. awesome. Well, that's really good to know. So if someone here in Gainesville or in the area uh, who's interested in science or has an affinity towards fossils and things like that, they actually have this really great resource here at the Florida Museum, right? Yeah, it's one of the best in the nation, too. I mean, the people don't realize that, but for example, for fish, I mean, we're in the top five largest fish collections in the U.S. and in the top ten for the entire world. So, I mean, there's this huge resource here that's right at people's fingertips. Well, thanks for talking to us today, and um, if you're watching, uh, you can hear more about Randy's story in our upcoming newsletter with our video storytelling toolkit. So we're going to feature you in the first newsletter. Oh, nice. And um, we'll have that Why Digitize video coming soon so uh, we can all get more inspired about digitization and the idea of biomission.